And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Israeli troops are pushing deeper towards Gaza's towns and cities as thousands of Israeli reservists enter the conflict for the first time. Israeli war planes continue to bombard targets across northern Gaza and in the town of Rafah on the southern border with Egypt. Meanwhile, Palestinian militants continue to fire rockets into southern Israel. The Israeli military is continuing to surround Gaza City, and many residents in the outlying suburbs are moving into the city center. A Palestinian human rights group told the Guardian newspaper, up to 90,000 Gazans, more than half of them children, had fled their homes across the territory. Israel and Egypt have refused to open their borders to allow Gazans to flee the fighting. The death toll now stands at nearly 900 Palestinians, many of them civilian, including 275 children. Another 4,100 Palestinians have been injured. 13 Israelis have been killed, including three civilians hit by rocket fire and 10 soldiers. Four of those soldiers died in friendly fire incidents. Aid agencies are warning of a humanitarian crisis in Gaza, with the territory's one and a half million residents in urgent need of food and medical aid. The BBC reports the main hospital in Gaza is close to collapse, with patients reportedly dying because of a lack of specialist doctors and basic medical equipment. On Tuesday, Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert said the offensive was nearing its goals, but that the assault will continue. Olmert also spoke out in defiance of the U.N. Security Council's call for an immediate ceasefire, saying, quote, nobody should be allowed to decide for us if we're allowed to strike. Both Hamas and Israel have rejected the U.N. resolution. Meanwhile, talks between Hamas and Egyptian officials are continuing in Cairo. We turn now to a debate on the issue. Attorney Lanny Davis is with us. He's a senior advisor and spokesperson for the Israel Project, former special counsel to President Clinton. He joins us from Washington, D.C. Joining us on the line from Beersheba, Israel, is Neve Gordon. He's the chair of the Department of Politics and Government, Ben-Gurion University of the Negev. He's author of Israel's Occupation. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Lanny Davis, you're in full support of the Israeli invasion. Tell us why. The right of self-defense when uh, terrorism kills innocent civilians intentionally, there isn't a civilized nation in the world that wouldn't attack back to try to prevent uh, that terrorism. I use terrorism with a very specifically defined expression. When a party shoots to kill innocent civilians intentionally for a political purpose, including one's own citizens to be exposed to death for political purposes. That's terrorism. So I support the right of self-defense against terrorism, as any country would if this were happening, I believe, uh, in the United States certainly would, if Rochester were being exposed to uh, mortars and rockets from Montreal. I believe that the United States would not sit idly by and allow the Canadians to do that. So I think the first and most foremost right is the right of self-defense against terrorism, which is intentional killing of civilians. And the issue of proportionality, the number of people we've seen dead, close to 900 Palestinians, over 200 of them children, overwhelmingly uh, civilian, uh, versus the 13 Israelis who have died, 10 of them soldiers, four of them in friendly fire. Yes, it's very disturbing uh, that there are so many more deaths and suffering by innocent people in Gaza. I grieve and regret that uh, as a human being, as an American, uh, as a Jew who has supported a Palestinian state ever since I was a child and have been very critical uh, through the years of the Israeli government not supporting a Palestinian state until just recently. So I grieve for those uh, numbers, but I don't understand the word disproportional. Number one, if it was one child, if it was your child who was intentionally killed by a terrorist and you asked your government to respond, and in order to respond, the people who launched the rockets placed their rockets among school children and innocent civilians deliberately, and that is an undisputed fact that Hamas has located its rocket launchers deliberately among civilians in schools beneath hospitals, then that unfortunate and terrible tragic death of 
innocent civilians uh, has to be more attributed to Hamas's calculated strategy of exposing its civilians to death but certainly does not take away from my first statement of the horror and the grief of any innocent civilians, whether it's one child in Israel or a hundred children in Palestine or in Gaza. Uh, th to me, they're equally tragic. There is no disproportionality. They're equally tragic. Professor Neve Gordon, uh, you and your family have spent a good deal of time in a bomb shelter against the Hamas rockets in uh, Ben Gurion University on the, uh, the, in, in the area around Ben Gurion University where you live. You have called for the invasion to end now. Why? I, I would call for the invasion not to begin. Uh, we just had a rocket here about an hour ago. And the issue is, I, I agree with some of what uh, Lanny says. First of all, I agree with the idea of a basic right to self-defense. And the right to self-defense is a right to self-defense from violence. We have to understand that the occupation itself is violence. It's an act of violence. Putting people in a prison, in a prison of one million and a half million people and keeping them there for years on end without basic food stuff, without allowing them to enter and exit when they will, is an act of violence. Without electricity, without clean water, it's all an act of violence. And these people are resisting. I'm against the way they're resisting, but we have to look at, at their violence versus our violence. About between 10 and 20 people, Israelis have died from rockets in the eight years that uh, rockets have been launched from the Gaza Strip into Israel. During the same amount of time, 4,000 Israelis have died from car accidents. And yet we don't see an outrage against the terrorism on the streets in Israel. But from these 20 people were allowed to enter into the Gaza Strip and bomb them from the air into their cage and kill 275 children. And Lenny says that it's not about disproportionality, but it is. Disproportionality is a term from international law. And by saying that he doesn't agree with it, he's defying international law. And Israel has been defying international law and international agreements and international decisions from 1967 or probably from before. And one of these decisions is that Israel must return these territories. And by maintaining and holding on to these territories through violent means, Israel is creating a situation where basically all the doors in the Gaza Strip are closed except one door. Sheikh Ahmad Yassin, the founder of Hamas, said it. Israel has closed all the doors in the Gaza Strip again, except for the mosque doors. We've closed the school doors. We've closed the, the, the economic doors. We've closed the medical doors. And, 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 so, and then we're surprised that we have to deal with Hamas. So I think we need to, to change the hard drive. And the hard drive has to be that you don't solve things through violence. You solve, thing, you solve diplomatic issues, political issues, through negotiations and talks. And it's about time that Israel sat down with Hamas and started negotiating with them. Hamas is the elected government of the Palestinian people. We don't need to like them. I don't like them. But they are the elected government, and we need to sit down and talk with them and not bomb them. Uh, Lonnie Davis, your response? Well, first of all, I appreciate uh, Professor Gordon and I probably have the same heart, and we probably have the same empathy, and we probably have the same goals of a two-state solution where people negotiate peace. And I appreciate uh, Professor Gordon uh, is sitting in a situation where his family is exposed to death, and I'm sitting safely here in Washington, so I don't mean to be judgmental, and I greatly respect uh, what the professor just said. But I focus on facts, and I'm sorry to say that I must disagree with the professor's uh, misstatement of certain facts or omission uh, might be also accurate. Let's start with the international law issue. It is a violation of international law to deliberately launch rockets from within civilian areas. Uh, Article 53 of the Geneva Accords expressly says that, yet the professor forgot to mention that. It is not a violation of international law to defend yourself if you're not intentionally targeting civilians. 
the Hamas is intentionally targeting civilians. The professor forgot to mention the distinction between defending yourself and tragically killing civilians in trying to find those who are launching missiles against you intentionally to kill civilians. And finally, and most importantly, I share the professor's desire for negotiations. And as I said, since I was a child, contrary to my father's uh, strong views, I favored a Palestinian state, independent, uh, and I still do. But Hamas's stated public objective is the destruction of Israel. There isn't a civilized country in the world that would sit across the table from a party that is launching terrorist, and it is defined as terrorism, to intentionally kill civilians as opposed to military. 